Anyone who wishes to retain the simple concept of right and wrong in the postmodern world will quickly find themselves being labelled as intolerant, and this is one of the worst put-downs anyone can receive in our time. The implication of intolerance is that you're full of hate, you're judgmental, divisive, a danger to the unity, and you're proud for thinking that you could possibly have access to an objective truth. No one wants to be called intolerant, and just the suggestion that we might is enough to silence and immobilize many people who might dare to voice their opinion that there is such a thing as absolute right and wrong. Let's have a look at this tolerance issue more closely, and I'll start by asking a question. Should we tolerate breathing? Or should we tolerate eating cheese sandwiches? I think most people would say that's fine. But should we tolerate murder? Should we tolerate rape? I think most people would say no, that we should be intolerant of rape and murder. So actually it turns out that there are things that should be tolerated and things that shouldn't. It turns out that there are things that it's good to be intolerant of. This seems so simple and the Bible confirms it. Amos 5.15 says, Hate what is evil, love what is good. Romans 12.9 says the same thing. It is as important to hate evil as it is to love good. In other words, it is as important to be intolerant of evil as it is to love good. So just like that, the postmodern idea of tolerance completely unravels. The fact is that we are all intolerant of some things, things we deem to be evil, and tolerant of others, things we deem to be good. We all find ourselves quickly referring to a concept of right and wrong to decide what should be tolerated and what shouldn't. We don't think murder should be tolerated because we think it's evil. We think eating cheese sandwiches should be tolerated because that's good, that's fine. We're all intolerant of some things and tolerant of others. We only differ on what should be tolerated. So how do we determine what should be tolerated and what shouldn't? Where do we draw the line? Should we tolerate abortions? Should we tolerate gay marriages? To the people who hold unity as the highest ideal, the answer is always yes. Everything that anyone wants to do is good, so it should be tolerated. Let everyone do exactly as they please all the time. Now this sounds quite loving and noble on the surface, but you will notice that when you say, let others do what they want to do, you automatically reserve that privilege for yourself. Let others do what they want to do automatically implies, let me do whatever I want to do. And let me do what I want to do doesn't sound so noble and loving. In fact, it sounds exceedingly selfish and immature. And that is the real bottom line of this idea of tolerance. The cult of tolerance is a very egocentric, selfish and self-centered view of existence that says, don't make me feel bad about my immorality. Don't bring up any ideas of right and wrong that sear my conscience and trouble my spirit. Just leave me alone to do whatever I want to do and I'll let you do the same. And if you try to confront me, I'll call you intolerant or judgmental or hateful to immobilize you. Now, interestingly, the golden rule of Satanism is, do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. In other words, the core principle of life as a Satanist is to do whatever you want all the time. Everything and anything is allowed if it makes you feel good and works for you. So this cult of tolerance conducted in the name of peace and unity has actually created the perfect conditions for the world to live under a completely satanic philosophy. We tend to think that being outright satanic is to drink blood and dance around cauldrons naked, but the essence of Satanism is far more mundane than that. The essence of Satanism is simply to do what you want. That's why Satanists regard My Way by Frank Sinatra as one of the most satanic songs of all time. With the idea of right and wrong taken out of the way, and everyone living according to their own selfish desires and calling it good, and with objectors immobilized for fear of being called intolerant or judgmental, everything has now become permissible. In this system, we have become our own gods, able to establish our own moral system, our own individual set of subjective truths. There's a saying that for evil to flourish, all it takes is for good men to do nothing. This is what has happened. I can illustrate this by using a scene from Star Wars. Anyone who has watched Return of the Jedi will remember the climactic fight scene where Luke Skywalker is watching the evil Empire destroy his friends. 
Luke is understandably getting quite angry with the evil emperor as he sits cackling in his chair. Luke notices his lightsaber and thoughts go through his mind that he could grab it and kill the evil emperor right then and there. The Emperor encourages him to do it, saying that if he gives in to his hatred of evil, he will have turned to the dark side and will become evil himself. Luke Skywalker is then rendered completely immobilised. See how this twisted thinking works. By saying hatred of evil is evil itself, Luke ends up immobilised. Similarly, by saying intolerance of evil is evil itself, Christians are immobilised. No one wants to be thought of as intolerant. And so with Christians doing nothing, evil is allowed to flourish. No one will stand up to it, and all of a sudden the golden rule of Satanism, do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law, rules the land. The cult of tolerance has imposed a standardless standard upon the masses, and our culture has slipped down a moral black hole. You can do anything you want unchallenged, because if anyone dares to say anything, they are being judgmental and intolerant of your truth. This is incredibly clever work by Satan, to have so successfully dressed up rampant self-centred immorality by the names of tolerance, unity and peace. Even more clever that it has rendered Christians unwilling to challenge it. Christians have generally gone into retreat and decided to conduct their faith behind closed doors. We're afraid that if we make truth claims in public, we'll get branded intolerant, and that's been enough.